Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Mark's Side of the Ring. I'm your host, Miguel Minetti, alongside my two co-hosts. Look at these two fine gentlemen, Nick Fiorentino and Fred DeCourt. What's going on, fellas? What's up? Glad to be here. What is going on? Look at Nick with that awful, awful Eagle Santa hat. I mean, come on, bro. You can't be coming onto our show wearing that type of hot garbage here, but... Uh, Nick, I know you got something probably good in your hands, my friend. What are you drinking tonight? Tell everyone. So I have something a little new that I haven't tried before, but I think it's delicious. It's by 1010 Premium Drinks, and it's a cream liqueur made with whiskey and coconut. Uh, so almost like a coquito, which is very popular during this time of year. You have nice notes of coconut, uh, very sweet. And the thing I like most about it is their shavings of coconut, like you would find on a toasted coconut uh, donut at Dunkin' Donuts. So very nice. Wow, man. Listen, if we ever start a podcast about different types of alcoholic drinks, we'll, we'll keep you top of mind for that. Cause I think if I did three podcasts, my wife would leave me. <laughs> I would, I would leave you if I were your wife immediately. But you would Fred, love to be with me. <laughs> Fred, Fred, what are you drinking, buddy? I'm going back to what I was drinking last week. I still had quite a bit of it. Screwball, peanut butter whiskey again. All right, look at that. Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Nice stuff. So we got a really exciting show today, guys. We're going to be talking about all things tables, ladders, and chairs. Uh, as we know, of course, this upcoming Sunday is the TLC pay-per-view emanating live from the Thunderdome 2.0 at the Tropicana Field in Tampa, Florida. So uh, what we're going to do, of course, like we do for every single pay-per-view is we're going to go through match by match. Uh, uh, truth be told, we're recording this as of Tuesday before the pay-per-view. So as of right now, there's only five matches listed. So we're going to go through those five matches and uh, we'll dissect to see uh, who we think the winner should be and will be. So I'm ready to go, guys. Uh, let's kick it off with uh, the first match I have on the list here. So in the order that I decided to write down, the first match I have on the list is the Raw Tag Team Championship match. And that's the New Day, who are the current Raw Tag Team Champions, taking on Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander of the Hurt Business. So, Fred, we're going to kick it off with you, my friend. Uh, tell us who you got and uh, a little background about what you think about this match. Um, I think it's going to be the Hurt Business's night uh, for the Tag Team Championship. I, I like the match. I mean, you know, they, they've been interacting with each other since the New Day came over to Raw in the draft. Um, and I, but I just think I love New Day. I was glad when they won the titles on SmackDown, then they just transferred them over with the Street Profits, uh, after the draft. I was, it was cool to see them back and have the titles, but I think they've had their time. It's good to get, uh, the titles on the Hurt Business. And then with Bobby Lashley being United States champion currently, it only gives them more power. I think the Hurt Business has been one of the better parts of Raw. And we'll get into that later about how Raw has, has been, but, um, yeah, I think the her business need the gold. And I wouldn't mind MVP getting some gold down the road. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm a big Hurt Business fan guy. So you're going with the Hurt Business then, huh? For the W? Yeah. Yeah, going with going with the Hurt Business. All right. All right. Nick, what do you got, buddy? Fred, you had me you had me all the way until you said that you want to see MVP it with some gold. In what great. world? In what it is the year 2020. We are going into 2021. We, the last thing we need to see yeah. is MVP with any gold whatsoever. Well, here's my reasoning. With the exception of Pat McAfee on NXT, MVP is currently the best promo in WWE. I'm not saying he's the best wrestler. I'm not saying he has the greatest matches. He could still go for his age. I mean, he is, I believe he's in his 40s. He was older when he even got started. But... um I, I think he's the best promo in WWE right now. Like I said, behind behind Pat McAfee, which is not a good thing that you know for the other guys. But wait, wait, wait. Fred, are you not are you not counting Roman Reigns his promos or? You know, here's my thing. I don't think Roman's character is great. What he says is is cool, like the way he's acting, but. As far as like an entertaining promo, I I don't count what he's doing. Okay. I, I I don't know. I you know like what he's saying is great. His promos are great, but I don't consider him a great promo. Like I, it's a weird. I I don't know how to explain it, but um, I just think his whole thing is the best thing going in wrestling. His okay. okay. The whole character. 
Um, okay, so Nick, uh, what, what is your feelings on the bill towards this match? Are you excited for this match? I mean, I, I honestly, uh, you know, I know you guys are big WWE fans, and I do love WWE, but, like, I'm going to call it like I see it. This is a very underwhelming pay-per-view, in my opinion. Uh, but you know what? If we look at the history of the December pay-per-view, uh, it usually is pretty underwhelming because uh, they're getting ready for the Royal Rumble and they're getting ready for the build to WrestleMania. And, and a lot of the times, it's not a great pay-per-view. They're not going to give their best stuff. It's the holiday season. Not a lot of people are tuning in for that reason alone. So I don't blame them for, for the card that we're going to be watching on Sunday. But that being said, this match, and we'll get into the rest of the matches, but I, this match is slightly entertaining to me given the fact that I think the New Day can have a match with anybody. I just think they're, they're very entertaining. And the Hurt Business, I know I've come on here multiple times and I've kind of shit on them and – Truth be told, they're not my favorite thing about Monday Night Raw, but they're certainly not the worst, as we'll get into it later. I do agree with Fred on the outcome. I think that it's the Hurt Business's time to win. I will say, so one minor note, uh, usually, in my opinion, and, and historically, whoever has the upper hand going into the pay-per-view usually loses uh, most of the time. And I understand that the Hurt Business... Uh, won their match yesterday, as we saw. But Bobby Lashley beat Jeff Hardy in the match via top tap out. Neither one of those guys are in this match. So I think this is an exception to the rule. And I do think the Hurt Business is going to win. So give me the Hurt Business uh, to win the tag team titles against the New Day. Okay. okay. So you both got the Hurt Business. Uh, I'm actually going New Day. And uh, the reason being is because the New Day actually just won the – uh, tag team championship match back on uh, what the season premiere SmackDown about two months ago, not even probably two months ago before they kind of traded with the street profits as they were drafted to raw. Um, not that the new day needs this win. Obviously they're already what, like an eight or nine time tag team champions. But mm -hmm. I, I think the fact that WWE has actually been a little bit better with this hot potato booking they've been, that they are, Oh, well, oh, so well known for over the years, you know, they've actually been a little better at that. And uh, I, I genuinely, as much as I do like the Hurt Business, and I think it would elevate someone like a Cedric Alexander. I think at the end of the day, they're just not looking to kind of just pass around the tag team championships. But obviously, I've been wrong before. Uh, you know, it would be great to see the Hurt Business win. But if I'm kind of sticking to my guns here and, you know, uh, putting a little money on this, I'm going to go with the New Day for the W here. And here, here's one thing I want to say too, Miguel, while you just mentioned it, you know, you mentioned the hot potato title switching. I think we've all heard the rumor that WWE would like to make the New Day, um, you know, the, the record holders for the most tag team title reigns uh, from uh, Devon and Bubba, right, Fred? Uh, yeah, Devon and Bubba have the most reigns overall in but not just WWE, like including all the promotions that they've won in I think in order in order to do that they got to lose the belt you That's know true. what i mean to win it again right. and win it again so i think with this belt and we know the rumors bret hart has been in the news uh this week saying vince mcmahon doesn't love tag team wrestling ruined tag team wrestling so i think we have an idea what vince thinks of tag team wrestling with this hot potato moving the belts around uh, Bret Hart might just be sour grapes, but you know, I do I do think the Hurt Business is going to win in this match. But would it shock me if the New Day won? No, not at all. Okay, right. okay, good. So uh, speaking of tag team wrestling, we're going to move on to our next match, which is also uh, a Raw segment match as well, too, and that's for the Women's Tag Team Championship. So uh, in this next match, we have Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, who are the current Women's Tag Team Champions, taking on Asuka. And now a mystery partner. It was supposed to be Lana, uh, but as we saw on Monday Night Raw this past week, she actually was taken out and, and you know, take, hurt and taken out of the match. Now we're seeing that Asuka's going to have a surprise uh, mystery partner, which as of now they haven't revealed yet. So, uh, Nick, I'll, I'll start with you on this one. Who do you think it is and who do you got for this match? So I'll answer your question with a question. Is there anybody out of the three of us that doesn't think it's Charlotte Flair? I honestly didn't think it was her, but now, I, I mean, yeah, it, it's not going to surprise me, but I was thinking there's been rumors that Melina and an Eva Marie, right, 
have been talked about coming back for months now. I don't think even Marie would make sense, but maybe a Molina would. But Charlotte Flair probably does make the most sense. I, I think those those ladies would be big pops. I think they would be better suited for the Royal Rumble where they need to figure out 30 women. Neither one of them were great wrestlers. You look at a team like who – so you got Nia Jax, big monster woman. I mean, very, very, very strong. And you have Shayna Baszler, whose resume speaks for itself. What two women could possibly beat them besides – uh, one woman who was undefeated throughout her entire NXT uh, career outside of, you know, moving up to the main roster in Asuka. And then you have uh, Charlotte Flair. I mean, that's the team to me that could beat them. So if Charlotte Flair is the mystery partner, give me Asuka and Charlotte in the win. If it is anybody other than Charlotte, give me Shanna Baszler and Nia Jax. Okay. I like that prediction. Fred, what about you? Well, it's funny. I hadn't really thought about Charlotte being possible. Uh, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, who had come out to help Oscar out last night, uh, alluded to on Raw Talk that they were going. One of the two of them were going to be the uh, fill-in. But I think that may be too, too obvious of a choice. And why would you split up their team to help out Oscar, right? But the Charlotte Flair idea, I didn't think of that till now, and I I like it. I think that that is a possibility. If everybody remembers. Nia Jax is the one that took Charlotte out when she left. That's right. I forget when, how long she's been gone, but sometime over the summer. Um, so that would make sense. Plus, you have the dichotomy of Asuka and Charlotte, who have a huge, you know, past rivalry, you know, dating back to their match at WrestleMania 34. So I think that would be really cool. You know, once enemies, now on the same side. Yeah. Um, and if Charlotte is the surprise uh, partner – then I do think they will win. I think Shayna and Nia have been have been decent as a for a makeshift tag team. I think the way it developed, I think they've done pretty good. Um, but Charlotte and Oscar would be way cooler to see them win it. Yeah, I didn't even think about Charlotte. No, I, I didn't either till now, but it makes perfect sense. The rumors have been swirling that she's ready for a comeback. Um, and with Nia taking being the one that took her out originally. Makes perfect sense. Sure, yeah. So, if it is Charlotte Flair, I agree. Uh, give me Charlotte and Asuka for all the same reasons that Fred and Nick said. I think, uh, you know, the history between Charlotte and Asuka speaks for itself. You need a dominant team to take out Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Truth be told, is going to pick Shayna and Nia because he said pretty much no matter who Asuka's partner is, I think they're trying to create a, a dominant lineage with uh, Shayna and Nia. But you give me Charlotte Flair back into the mix. I'm going, uh, I'm going Charlotte and Oscar all day on this. So, guys, one of the things I just noticed, too, and I think it's a good time to kind of talk about this as we're going through the matches here, four out of five of the matches that are already uh, designated, again, as of Tuesday, right, are Raw matches. So the only match uh, is for the uh, Universal Championship, which we'll get to down the road. But before we move on to the next match, um, and Nick, I know, and Fred, we talked about this right before we kicked off the show, so we would talk about it on air here. I wanted to ask you guys, right? So last night was Raw's first uh, edition of the Thunderdome 2.0, you know, emanating from the Tropicana field. Um, what have you guys been thinking of Raw, right? Uh, as we saw, obviously, today in the ratings, uh, Raw did get its lowest rating ever. Um, you know, we've talked offline about Raw being a little bit plotting at times, and uh, it's definitely clear as day now that SmackDown is the A show. And uh, truth be told, I've been pretty impressed with SmackDown, especially over the last three or four months or so. But what are your guys' opinions real quick here on, on Raw? Uh, Fred, I'll let you kind of kick off your thoughts first. You know, I mean, I'm going to start off with the obvious. Three hours is too long. Everybody knows that. Everybody says that. I think WWE feels that way. This is USA Network's call, unfortunately. I wish USA Network would be like, you know what? Three hours is too much. Go to two. Because it would definitely benefit them. But... With that being said, I mean, I, I don't think it's any fault of the, the superstars. Um, you know, there's been numerous reports about the, the scripts being, you know, sent so late and nobody really knowing what's going on till the last minute. They've been saying that for years, though. Is it getting worse? Maybe. I'm not backstage. I wish I was, but I'm not. Uh, you know, but I just think Raw, you know, the three hours doesn't help. Um, I don't see the... Um, continuity in pushing certain stars you know um when keith lee first debuted 
on Raw the night after SummerSlam. He was a big thing those first couple of weeks. He faced Orton at Payback. Uh, you know, he was with Drew McIntyre. There was involvement there. And then, not that he hasn't been doing anything. He's still involved, obviously. And he's, you know, he lost the handicap match to Miz and Morrison, which sucked, but whatever. Um, but, like, that, just an example right there. Like, he's a guy that was starting big in August. By now, he could have been in the title picture if they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? It, I mean, so, like, there's inconsistency with building the stars. Um, you're bound to have repeated matches. You're bound to have 50-50 booking. When you have so much content to fill, what, what else are you going to do with it? So I think that's the problem. I think, you know, they could put on the best show they want, but the, how do you do that every week? Yeah, three, it's, three it's, hours. It's, in, it's impossible. But Steven Spielberg couldn't do it. Three, three hours is definitely a lot. Nick, is you know, to say that there's there's a lot of fluff in Monday Night especially, Raw? Especially at 52 weeks a year. It's, it's very hard, you know? <laughs> I agree. I mean, I agree with Fred. I just think that first and foremost, three hours is too long. I agree. Second, I think any time WWE and, and Monday Night Raw has had its its history of like lowest ratings to date, I would guarantee or I would put money on that most of the time their lowest ratings of the year are between September in February during the NFL football season. I just oh, think sure. that when the game is good, people want to watch real life over, over scripted wrestling. It's just the nature of the beast. I think, uh, you know, more people will tune into football. So you record wrestling and you watch it later. You won't be spoiled on anything, but if you try watching raw and you miss the football game, you will know immediately what's going on in that football game. So I think that plays a lot into it too. That being said, I just, you know, we, we've, come on here uh for months now uh and defended you know oh it's not them it's covid it's it's not this it's covid they've gone through some slow periods but the product last night was not very good and it, it's hard to get through it's hard to watch um most of the matches uh, were, were matches that we're going to see again or at least some sort of variation of a match we're going to see again uh, in six days from now. It's just you got to do something different. You got to do something interesting to kind of get the people drawn in and want to make them want to watch it. Truth be told, this TLC pay-per-view is not, like I mentioned earlier, a pay-per-view that I think is going to be very, very interesting outside of a few matches, but I don't know. I just, you know, you ask my opinion. I think that WWE is kind of trending downward, but do I think that they could pick it back up like that come January when we're getting into Rumble season and we're getting into the, you know, WrestleMania and there's a vaccine out for COVID? You know, there's going to be some live fans at WrestleMania. Do I think they're trending up? I do. So, all right. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to assume that they're obviously not going to move from the three hour format, right? They're just making. No money hand over right. this with that so what do you think is the game changer here like what what can they do to kind of pick back up do you think it's just as simple as what nick said that once royal rumble season and wrestlemania season and uh, obviously in two more weeks there's no more monday night football do you think they're kind of just treading water here until monday night football is over to say you know it's our time to shine again and 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 maybe that's something that happens every year but you know, is there anything in particular you guys can think of that would kind of be better suited for Monday Night Raw at this point? I mean, it does pick up. It, it is always it, – historically, it's always down during football season, you know, for the simple fact that people are, are watching Monday Night Football. Um, it will pick back up after, you know, by the Rumble going into WrestleMania. But it, you also have to remember, too, that the ratings have been down for a while. This is not like, oh, all of a sudden. And then people were thinking that with COVID, oh, maybe they'll go back up because people are home, especially in the beginning. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. And the ratings didn't show that. If anything, the, the ratings were going down, which I understood that also because the environment that COVID presents for the show doesn't make it as entertaining as it is in a normal you know, setting. So you had one hand, you know, thinking how oh, COVID would help the ratings, but then the, the way the product got affected, it didn't. So there was that. The Thunderdome does help. 
um, that, but the ratings haven't sh- really shown much improvement, obviously, as of this past week. But no matter what they do, uh, right now, with three hours, Raw is is hard to get through. You could the go home Raw to WrestleMania is going to be good, okay, in a normal setting. But it's still three hours, and there's still going to be parts of that show that dragged, even on the go home to Monday Night Raw. The only Raw that may not have any dragging may be the Raw the night after WrestleMania. But three hours is three hours. No matter you, you could have every you know big name in town. It's three hours you have to fill. At some point, you're bound to get you know a spot on the show that's not great. It's just inevitable. I leave watching SmackDown feeling like, damn, that was a good show. It's over? Oh, shit, okay. I could have gone for a, a, a little more of that. By Raw, I'm like, oh, okay, Raw's over. Ooh, got through that one. Right, yeah. It is what it is, you know? Um, I really, I mean, could they make the writing better? Could they push certain stars? Yeah, there's, there's things they could do to help. But the bottom line, three hours is three hours, no matter what you put out. Sure, sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, Unfortunately. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, one storyline in particular as we move on to our next match here that I've actually been really invested in is uh, The Fiend versus Randy Orton. Yeah. Um, Nick, contrary to what you were saying before, where you think this is going to be a little bit more of a filler pay-per-view, you know, I would disagree with that. I think the two TLC matches and this next match that we're about to uncover and kind of go through here real quick uh, are pretty exciting. And and maybe on paper, maybe a little bit predictable, but I think the outcome is going to be uh, obviously uh, something that people are going to want to see. And, and the net match I'm talking about, of course, is The Fiend versus Randy Orton here. So, um, Nick, I'll kind of start off with you. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are with this build and who do you got for the win on this one? I don't hate the build. Uh, I think the build has been pretty good. We've seen this feud before, but, you know, not in the Bray Wyatt uh, Fiend character that we're seeing now. I like what they've been doing. Randy Orton has owned the uh, Bray Wyatt character uh, in their history together. So I think that this is the perfect time for a reverse, of course. So I will take the Fiend in a win. I also think when the Fiend is the Fiend, the only guy that can beat him is uh, apparently Bill Goldberg uh, in five seconds. But uh, just a little dig at WWE booking. But Uh, I do think that The Fiend is due for a win over Randy Orton at this stage in the game. Why would you give Randy Orton, at his age, a win over The Fiend? It just doesn't make sense to me. If I'm a betting man, I'm going The Fiend. Anytime he's on TV, it's entertaining to me. Uh, And, yeah, to your point, Miguel, you know, when it comes to, like, some of the matches that are entertaining on this pay-per-view, yeah, there's three matches that are pretty entertaining, uh, but – you know, unfortunately, that's 50% of the pay-per-view, and the other 50% of the pay-per-view, I think, is is kind of filler. So, I, you know, it's just not a pay-per-view that – I'm certainly not looking forward to the pay-per-view. Do I think that it could deliver in a big way? Yes. But uh, I do think that The Fiend will deliver in a big way, and I, I think he's going to win. Fred, do you think The Fiend needs the win here uh, for his character? I don't know if he needs it. Um because he's practically dominated Orton in the whole feud. I mean, he's the fiend. I think he's untouchable, whether he loses or wins. Uh, but he c- can't hurt him to get it, for sure. I Do I think he should get the win? Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, I'm hoping this isn't a one-and-done match, because I want to see a nice rivalry out of this, even if it just culminates at the Rumble, whatever. Um, I'd like to see more than one match between Randy and, and, and Bray. I like that they. I love when they're pl- when they play off of things that happened in the past, and like I said, we, we've seen that in a lot of Bray's feuds, which I think is one of the cool things. People that beat him when he was just Bray Wyatt, now he's getting his revenge as the Fiend. We saw it with Cena. We saw it with um, Finn Balor. We we've seen it with multiple people. The Miz, or not the Miz, uh, Daniel Bryan, um, and now with Randy Orton. So. I'm a big fan of the feud, I, but I do hope that the fiend gets the win. So is that is that your pick, the fiend? Yeah, the fiend's going to be my pick. Uh, I just think unless something screwy happens, I don't see the fiend losing. If it was Randy versus Bray Wyatt as like the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt, 
then maybe. But as the Fiend, I don't see him winning, uh, losing. Yeah, I, I'm, go- I'm going with the Fiend as well, too. Uh, I, I yeah. think he does need the win. Um, it's been a hell of a year for Randy Orton. Besides Roman Reigns, I think Randy Orton's had the second uh, best year out of any superstar currently in Dayton. Yeah. So Drew McIntyre. Well, oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's debatable. It could be McIntyre, but... Drew McIntyre's been the champ for almost the entire year. How is he not... <laughs> I, we'll, we'll say easily then top three, right? Randy Orton's All right, fair at, enough. at the worst, right? Uh, and it would be a shame to see, obviously, Orton kind of end the year because, he, you know, truth be told, he started the first half of the year uh, with a lot more momentum than the second half of the year. But I think The Fiend definitely needs to win. Orton's at a place now where he can lose every match and he's untouchable. Uh, you know, I call it the Chris Jericho treatment, right? Chris Jericho loses a lot of matches. He still does <laughs> AEW, but... Still on top of his game, always will be at this point. If he needs his to, to, to your point, and and I just thought of it, you know, when you mentioned Randy Orton's momentum in the first half of the year, we know what the WrestleMania match is with Orton. We know what that match is going to be. Now, if the Fiend beats Orton, if the Fiend beats Orton in five minutes, is anybody not excited for Edge versus for Randy Orton? No, everybody's going to be excited for it because it's Edge coming back, and you know, there's going to be fans there and everything like that. But if Randy Orton beats The Fiend, now The Fiend goes where? We know where Randy Orton is going. We don't know where The Fiend is going. And that's why I think The Fiend, to your point and to everybody's point, I, you know, I think we all agree that he needs to win more. And here's the reason why. Because we know where Randy Orton is going. We don't know where The Fiend is going. True. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100% on that. Real, real quick, before we move on to the next match, I know it's you know middle of December, so we're looking at at least four months out, three and a half months out before WrestleMania. But uh, fantasy booking here real quick. Who do you guys think The Fiend should face at WrestleMania? I don't think you know, that's hard, to, that's hard to say. There's really no clear-cut person right now. Uh, if The Fiend was still on SmackDown, I would have said him in Roman. Mm-hmm. You know, um, could it be Drew McIntyre for the title? It, it could be. If not Drew, then who else? Yeah. Think about it. Unless Brock does come back, Brock's a possibility. Um, I, I don't see anybody else on the Raw side that is makes sense. Well, because you, you, you got to make good with just, uh, The Fiend, right? I mean, you got to make good with the match because he was supposed to have it with John Cena, obviously, last year in front of a lot of fans. So, obviously, they were hyping up The Fiend's first WrestleMania match. So in my opinion, yeah. it has to be someone big. But Nick, I'll let you give your thoughts on that. You were no, say- I was gonna and just to play devil's advocate, I think Brock Lesnar it, it would be a, would be an option, but you're really gonna bring Brock Lesnar back to lose to the fiend. I just to me I don't see that being right. a, a uh, something that could happen. But I honestly don't know off the top of my head right now, running through the roster, who would be a logical choice for the Fiend? Can they bring in like a, a one-time star to fight him? Sure, they could. I don't know who that person would be. We know the Undertaker's done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you you talked about like Bray Wyatt avenging losses. I mean, beating the Undertaker <laughs> since he was beating him at WrestleMania, plus at Survivor Series with Kane and the Brothers in Destruction. Uh, match. I don't know where they're going with Bray Wyatt. That's uh, one I I would have loved to seen, but I, I I don't know. I don't know if it's, yeah. it it'll happen. I mean, could I don't know if Cena's in the plans for this year. Could they do Cena and him again in the regular setting like originally was was planned? They could. Could you know? Could it be Goldberg? There's been talks about Goldberg. Everybody said Goldberg and Reigns last week was the big talk of the town. Could it be Goldberg and The Fiend again, and The Fiend gets his win back? Who knows? It's I mean, possible. Do you think, just spitballing here too, do you think that, it? you know, we've seen WrestleManias where they've advertised cross-promotional matches. Can it be The Fiend against Seth Rollins or somebody like that? I mean, Yeah, I mean, you know what? Anything is truly possible. You know, you think, oh, no, they, they won't do that. They can't do that. But then they do. So you, you really don't know. They, they could do that because – uh, well, Seth is out for a little bit right now, uh, you know, because of Becky. Uh, yeah, congratulations. Baby, but congratulations, yep, indeed to them. But uh, yeah, what, who does he face at WrestleMania, right? I think there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of questions, in it, which I part of it I like. I like the, the uncertainty of who people are going to face. You know, sometimes by now we have, like, an idea, at least, of where things may be going. 
we don't even know for sure Roman's match. You know, there's all different talks. There's him and McIntyre in a rematch. There's him and Goldberg. There's, you know, obviously him and the Rock, but they, they're going to save that for the next year if it happens, which I think is the smart idea. But um, so who who knows? Who knows? It, it, it could be it could be somebody that we least expected that we didn't even know was going to be around. How about you know, Fred? Maybe you'll like this one. Uh, only really Fred will understand this one. How about the Fiend versus Carrying Cross from NXT? Ooh. Now I don't know about this year at WrestleMania, but that needs to happen at some point for sure. Yeah, I mean that'll be a that'll be a great a great one. Talk, talk, yeah, talk about a spectacle. But yeah, it's just it's yeah, always yeah. fun to kind of predict a couple months. Out. Yeah, I mean I say this. Look at look at last year we. Did, we would none of us would even have said Edge versus Randy Orton would be a match at WrestleMania. True, good point. Good point. Right. Yep. Let's move on now to our final two matches, gentlemen. We are going to keep things on the raw side here, real quick. Before you do that, did we miss? Unless I'm, I'm missing something. Isn't Sasha and Carmella on the card? No, they they took it off because of. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think it may get added with a stipulation. Is what I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, the so, way the finish happened on SmackDown, yeah, I think that it, you know, it, but we'll see Friday. I, I looked at the official card right before this just to make sure, Nick, and I said the same thing, but they had their match last week on SmackDown, and I think, you know, in the storyline that was in place of, and so obviously I'm sure they're going to add it back this week on SmackDown, but since it's not official match, uh, we won't count it for now. So everyone I'm just, taking Sasha if it is. Okay, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll pick Sasha too, and I'm sure Fred is. Yeah, up. yeah, same, same here. Um, well, I love what Carmella's doing. I, I love I, sidebar. I love the few that they're having. I think it's good. It's fresh. Do you it's like new. her character, Fred? You like her character? Who, uh, Carmella? Yeah, yeah. I, I like that she changed it up. I love the old, the original, like the Staten Island, you know, chick from Staten Island, the moonwalking, trash talk, you know, that whole gimmick. I love that. I thought that was cool. It was different. It was, but I think with like any character, you have to evolve and change over time. So I think, I think it's a good change. I don't. It doesn't seem. It seems very her. I the, the honest thing is what she was portraying wasn't her at all. She's not from Staten Island. She's from Massachusetts. She's not a good debt, you know. She but, uh, but she pulled it off good. You know, you wouldn't know that. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I like it. Something different. I like the whole. Snap her finger thing and the champagne and the, you know, I, I like that. My <laughs> wife, my wife who is from Staten Island, is barking in the other room at uh oh, <laughs> I, 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 like, I like that Fred called her good day. That's hilarious. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Anyway, guys, let's move on to the Raw Championship match, which is for, of course, the Universal Title here. Uh, we have Drew McIntyre taking on. Uh, AJ Styles in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. So that's our fir- that's our first gimmick match on the whole pay per view out of the five matches so far. Um, Fred, I'll start with you on this. Uh, who do you got, and are you excited for this match? Because I know I am. Yeah, um, I have Drew winning for sure, um, but I'm very excited. It's the first time him and Drew, uh, AJ and Drew rather, pro downs pal, uh, have ever faced each other. Yeah, ever. So that's cool. It's a new match. Um, and I think that they're going to have a great match. I mean, AJ Styles has a great match with everybody. And to be honest with you, Drew McIntyre had a great match with pretty much everybody. So I'm thinking they're going to pull a great one off. Uh, not that TLC is necessarily Drew's forte, you know, but I think they'll have have a great one. So honestly, I mean, with the exception of everything Roman do- doing is my favorite thing overall. And I'm excited for him and Owens, which we'll get to. But... This is probably the match I'm looking forward to most as far as, like, the match itself. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be – I think it'll be match of the night, personally. Yeah, I, and I agree with you. And I was going to kind of say that in a moment here that I think – and we'll get to KO versus Roman Reigns. I think that's going to be more of an angle than, a, than mm-hmm. itself. I think from bell to bell, though, McIntyre and AJ is going to steal the show for the night. Yeah. Uh, Nick, who do you got? Uh, I won't elaborate much more than what you guys have already said. I do think um, I'm going to go AJ just to be different. Uh, I give me uh, give me AJ winning on a Sheamus interference. I don't think Drew McIntyre is going into uh, the, his second WrestleMania, you know, with the title. Of course, he won it last year, and 
I don't think he's going to be the title holder going into this year's WrestleMania. AJ's the bigger name. When you're getting into WrestleMania season and you're looking at potential of 50-50 fans, we'll see, you know, it's hard to predict what's going on right now with COVID. I think they're going to want the bigger names on the bigger stage. They tried Drew for a year, and I think it was successful. In the end, it will be hard to kind of predict because there weren't any fans uh, during this entire time. But I'm going to be different. I'm going to say AJ. I do think that the match is going to be super entertaining to Fred and your point. Uh, but, you know, again, to Fred and your point, who does AJ Styles have a match with that isn't super entertaining? He's the best wrestler, you know, on, on either promotion. He's the best wrestler. So, uh, I, you know, I think AJ Styles and Drew is going to be a great match. I love, and I always bitch, you know, and Miguel has heard it longer than you, Fred, but I always bitch about, like, we've seen it before. Well, mm -hmm. here we have it. So right. I think it's going to be pretty interesting, and I think it's going to be pretty entertaining. I, I like the fact that they've casted doubt with the fact that they have uh, AJ's bodyguard almost along with Miz Morrison. I mean, they have like four hands on this, right? Taking on Drew McIntyre. So it's almost like a Drew McIntyre versus the world at this yeah. point. Right? You have the doubt of Miz cashing in money in the bank. You got his henchman, John Morrison. You got AJ's bodyguard, right? So at any time, and I'm sure this will happen during the match like we saw on Raw this past week. Mm -hmm you're going to see interference, outside interference from probably all three of those guys. So uh, I like that they're casting doubt, right? Obviously, AJ is a very credible opponent and a credible champion, multi-time, uh, you know, WWE champion, as well as other promotional champion too. Uh, but at the end of the day, Nick, I disagree. I think, I think Drew McIntyre will continue his reign. I think he does head into WrestleMania as a strong style champion, right? As the kind of a big showdown match, maybe against Brock Lesnar again, right? You know, I know it's probably a, a WrestleMania we've talked about where there might be a lot of rematches. And to me, I think this is the rematch that the fans want to see and deserve is Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre, not in a five minute match with nobody in the crowd, but this time with thousands of fans in the crowd. Uh, and I know for sure I'd be down to see that, but I'm growing Drew McIntyre to retain the WWE championship. Uh, with all that outside interference. So, yeah, I would be surprised if we that WWE. Yeah, you go ahead, Fred. No, go ahead. You, you finish. I can't imagine WWE is going to go back to back WrestleManias with three matches. And I know that Roman Reigns and Goldberg didn't happen, and that's just a rumor. But, like, if they go into WrestleMania and it's Goldberg against Roman Reigns and it's Edge against Randy Orton and it's Drew McIntyre against Brock Lesnar, that will not be a very entertaining WrestleMania looking in terms of like matches we've already seen before. Like, do something different. Uh, hey, I mean, they could. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying it's, it's definitely an option. You know, I think Roman versus Goldberg, in my opinion, is the least likely to happen. I know JW has been kind of uh, putting out little feelers out there, right? And Goldberg was on, uh, you know, bump, bump, the bump <laughs> on the JW programming, but uh, yeah, bump, bump, the bump, <laughs> bump, bump, the bump, right? I think uh, I think they're just kind of teasing, and they don't want to say well, who Roman is really facing it. They're just trying to put some feelers out there, but. I don't know, Fred. What do you think? You think Drew? Obviously, I know you picked Drew to retain, but you think Drew mm -hmm. heads into WrestleMania still as WWE champion at this point? I mean, here's the thing. You know, he already lost it once for the month. Do you have him lose it again so quickly? Uh, I don't know if Sunday's the night to do that. Maybe the Rumble, he can lose it, but to who? AJ, maybe. But do, you know, then the thing. Okay, who does AJ face at WrestleMania? Right. There's a lot of questions, and you know what I was originally going to get to before was: Do we think the Miz will cash in? Is will Drew, if he does lose it, will it be that way? I could see that more than him losing it to AJ in the TLC match. You know, do I see a Miz cash in after they've been teasing it, possibly? You know, and then you have Miz versus Drew at Rumble, and Drew wins it back, but. They already had Drew lose it and win it back, so I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, they already did that with him and Orton, so it's like, you know, um, we'll see. I, I I could see Drew as champion going into WrestleMania. It'd be interesting. I mean, him and Brock, if that were to happen, uh, I think would be intriguing. These matches normally, if they happen under normal circumstances, a rematch, unless it was worthy of a rematch. Yeah, I agree with Nick. Like, we've seen it already at, at WrestleMania. But 
anything that happened at last year's WrestleMania, I don't even consider as seeing it at WrestleMania. I think if I, this is the one year I would not be upset if they did rematches. Um, that would necessarily had no reason to have a rematch only because like, I feel like we didn't get the real match last year. So I feel like I'm owed some of those matches from last year. I don't feel like I got Drew versus Brock. I don't feel like I got, you know, um, Charlotte and uh, Rhea. Not that that's even talked about, but I'm saying if they were to do that, like I, I would, you know what I mean? I want those matches I was supposed to see in an actual setting. Now, if it's going to be in the Thunderdome, then no. Right, right. No, I agree with you. And, and I know you said this before, Fred, and we'll move on to the final match here. But to your point, I do appreciate the fact that as of right now, a lot of these matches are up in the air, right? There's no really clear cut direction of what WWE is going for. And, you know, that's not always the case heading into mid December. I mean, right. You know, there's right. been years where at this point we know where the matches are leading to, right? We know where the champions are going to. So, as which is cool for us to, to, to have uncertainty, right? Yeah. But I think what, what that is, it is that is another, there's a, you know, reasons behind that, which aren't good. Oh yeah. yeah, that they that they don't know what they're doing, which is not which is not good. <laughs> so and, and, it's an issue, you know. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the you know obviously the best case scenario for them, but uh, I think to your point, they are waiting to see our fans definitely coming to WrestleMania, right? I mean, I'm yeah, ready. right. That's the thing too. Yeah, I'm sure they have a WrestleMania plan with fans and a WrestleMania plan in the Thunderdome. Right with limited to no fans. So yeah. because, because I guarantee you, if we weren't so deep in, you know, as we were this past year with WrestleMania, they wouldn't have done some of those matches. They would have saved them. Absolutely, you know. But they they were they it was you know it was too late. So, um, you know, I mean, you could only save so much because we don't know how long any of this is going to last. That's the other problem, you know. So you do have to have somewhat decent shows you can't just put together complete garbage you know sure. during the pandemic but yeah i mean they they would certainly save the major things they want to do right so one would think anyway yeah so anyway let's move on to because we'll see what obviously what happens here but let's move on to our uh probably what's going to be the main event of the night actually that'd be another debate too what match will close the show but well we'll talk about the match we haven't talked about yet at least and that's the universal championship the only match as of right now on the smackdown side of things roman reigns who's obviously currently the universal champion taking on ko uh nick i'll let you kind of kick off this final match here with your predictions uh who do you got and what do you think of the build here of this uh, I'll be super quick. Roman Reigns is going to win the match. I mean, I don't think anybody would, would think otherwise, but I'll, uh, you know, entertain, you know, and be excited for what you guys have to say on it. I think the build Roman Reigns is the best thing in wrestling right now. I think the build's been pretty good. Uh, I like how they've kind of changed it up where, you know, he's not fighting an Uso. He's not fighting somebody as part of like the family. He's fighting somebody different. And uh, truth be told, I'm, I'm a big Kevin Owens fan. Uh, I do think he's entertaining to watch. I think he's, you know, his his move set and everything is really good. That being said, Roman Reigns is going to get the dub. Uh, you can lock that up. That'd be the most, you know, I'd put the most amount of money on that. I I, I love the fact on this past week on SmackDown, Roman Reigns is beating the shit out of KO. Looked in the camera and called out his wife. And yeah, that was cool. That was yeah, really, that was that was good. I, I mean, it's so awesome just to see this character. I know we talked about this guy at length here for multiple weeks, but I thought it was great that he switched it up and basically said, I'm the man that put the food on the table on a roof over your head, and if your husband doesn't fall in line, I'm going to take that food off the table and that roof away from your family. So, yeah, uh, it's been – it's been he's just been obviously been far and above better than anything else in wrestling. In Agreed. Uh, Fred, I'm assuming you're going with Roman, so you could tell us real quick who you're picking, but uh, any other thoughts that we haven't said so far on this match? No, no, Roman. I mean, I love KO. Um, I'm glad to see him back in the main event picture for the title, even though he's probably not going to win. I think he's been great in the story. I think he's, you know, he's been putting up a fight to Roman. He hasn't been, like, you know, acting scared of him or, you know, bowing down to him or anything, but... I mean, come on. It's got to be Roman. And going back to my previous thing about the, the promo thing, and you questioned me about me not thinking with Roman, and I said he – but, like, yeah, I mean, when he cut that, like, it just, that was a – I mean, that was a great promo. 
I think Roman's just been the best across the board. You know, all boxes checked. Um, sure. As far as, as all of WWE, as, as are all of wrestling. Yeah, I agree. What's up, Nick? Yeah. So, Roman Reigns, I, we, I think we all agree. And I think we all agree that Roman Reigns is going to win uh, the match. Roman Reigns, that being said, Roman Reigns is going to lose at some point. Roman Reigns' next loss, pinfall loss, will be to who? I hope Goldberg, Goldberg. if anyone. Fred? <laughs> I don't know if Nick heard me. I say uh, Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't think – I think in either scenario, even with The Rock, I think it, it would do more for Roman to win that match. Yeah. I'll right. say somebody different than you two, and, and maybe it's just wishful thinking. I hope his first loss is to Big E. Yeah. Dude, that would make that would make a star, right? Uh, that's why I said Rock, if anyone, because uh, as much as I want that match to happen, I do want Roman to obviously – win get the w over the rock but man if roman can make a new star like someone like a big yeah. e, that would be huge for him uh, did you guys hear the comments on i thought the comments that uh paul Heyman mentioned about you know throwing in the shield and just saying you know yep. when's the last time anybody mentioned roman reigns and brought up the shield uh, in in terms of like the potential that Big E can have, and you know when Big E hits his potential, who's going to be mentioning his run with the New Day? I thought that was uh, you know it just goes to show you that Paul Heyman is just the best, one of the best storytellers there is. Yeah, that was well done. They did that on Talking Smack. That was really thought it was good. great. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yeah. great. Talk, Talking Smack is, is is a great show to watch. Uh, it pops mm -hmm. up like Saturday mornings usually on the network. But yeah. I never watch the Raw one, Raw Talk after Raw, but because nothing ever good ever happens, and it's already on at like eleven oh five, and I'm going to bed at that point. But yeah, right. Talking, Talking Smack is, in my opinion, a must see. Uh, they've delivered yeah. pretty much every week with at least a little segment here and there. Uh, uh, so yeah, some good information here, guys, and, and and I appreciate going through these matches uh, again. I know on paper. To Nick's point, maybe it's not the most uh, uh, exciting pay-per-view, but I am looking forward to all these guys and gals putting on, uh, obviously, a good show here. Uh, before we conclude today, I think the one other topic we wanted to talk about really quick was uh, there was a little scuttlebutt, as Taz likes to say, if you guys ever listened to the Taz show back in the day, it was his word, but a little scuttlebutt that uh, backstage in WWE locker room that uh, there's been some internal talk about a few talent that WB maybe has mishandled over the years and looking to maybe kickstart some of their careers and putting them in a good place. Uh, Fred, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you saw here with this backstage stuff? Yeah, I, I read that report that there was uh, the writers were told to provide a list of names that you think were being underutilized on the show. And a majority, a few, these five names pretty much came up on everybody's list. Uh, Chad Gable was one of them, and um, Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro was one of them, which is no surprise there. Peyton uh, Royce. Was, Peyton Royce, which I, I don't even want to get into that when they split her and Billy Kay up. I mean, Terrible. at first I thought, okay, they're going to make Peyton a star. That's why they're doing it. Billy Kay's going to get the short end of the stick. But besides, like, uh, uh, you know, teasing a tag team with, um, oh my God, I'm having a mind blank. Well, who, who said it? Was it? It was with Mandy Rose, right? No, no, Lacey, Lacey, Lacey. Evans. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, and then that went nowhere. It's just like, yeah, that was stupid. Um, I forget the other names, but it makes sense. I mean, I'm glad that they're acknowledging that. If this is true, I'm glad that they're taking the steps to figure out that there are people on the roster that have been underutilized, and the names that came up certainly fit that bill. I think there's other ones that weren't even on the list. They, you know, they said they could, said uh, they added Angel Garza here. I'm looking at the list. Yes, Angel Garza was the other one. Yeah, he and, is. I love him. If you remember, I think yeah, he's over phenomenal. The summer, uh, I, I was telling Nick this, Nick, uh, Fred. I don't think you were on this episode, but Garza definitely reminds me of the light version of obviously of Eddie Guerrero. Right? I'm never going to put oh him yeah in the category of Eddie, but. Man, they could do some yeah. real wonders with this guy. He's got a lot of charisma to him. 
Uh, he can go in the ring, right? Obviously, yeah. the, the ladies like him, right? He's always put on a good uh, performance every time he's in the ring, right? And on television. Uh, this guy, though, has been misused since they split up him and Andrade with Cena Vega. And I, I, I think out of anybody, you know, I love Peyton Royce for sure, but I think Angel Garza definitely, definitely needs yeah. to be uh, treated better. Main now, there's a rumor about him. Um, we were talking about Eva Marie returning, right? And he had been doing, he didn't do anything last night. Uh, I don't know if he did a W.com exclusive, but for a few weeks on Raw or a couple of weeks, he was doing those backstage videos where he was talking into the camera, right? And then he did a W.com. I don't know why it was on W.com as an exclusive and not on the show last week, but he handed the rose and a woman took the rose, right? You just saw her hand. Why this wasn't on Raw last week? I don't know. You got three hours to fill. You didn't fill this, but whatever. Uh, and then Eva Marie had posted a thing with a bouquet of roses on her Instagram. Right. And there's a lot of uh, talk that the mystery hand that took the rose is going to turn out to be Eva Marie. That would be interesting, yeah. So we'll see. Now, I don't know yet if they did another WD.com exclusive. Uh, I know they didn't do anything on the show last night with it. So I'll, I have to see if that has, if anything's been posted as far as that's concerned. But um, if they do that, that would obviously put him on TV, you know, again, and hopefully. Nick, I'll, I'll end this segment, the last segment, before we conclude for tonight with you. Who's the one guy or girl, your pick, that you want to see W picks their current you know, run? I think I think the the common answer or the number one answer would be Cesaro, but I feel like we've seen it before. And I feel like at this point, you know, he, he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Then he's a Paul Heyman guy. And, and you know, then he's a tag team champ with Sheamus. And I feel like we've seen it to at a point where, like, if they were going to do something with him, like, they would have done it by now. I don't know if it necessarily means that he needs a fresh start somewhere else. Uh, a fresh paint of coat, as uh, Bruce Pritchard would say. Um, but I, I do think that he might need a fresh start somewhere else to be able to reinvent himself. Because if they started making a star out of Cesaro, I don't necessarily know if that would intrigue me in their current state. It's like, well, we've seen it before. Truth be told, if I could have my pick of anybody, I feel like they utilize the guys pretty well. I, I just don't think Shinsuke Nakamura Mora, Sammy Zayn, uh, any of these guys. I think we might have lost Nick here. Yeah, I was going to say he something. just fell apart. Oh, there oh. he is. Nick's Can Nick. you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you were saying Shinsuke. My, my, my internet connection is unstable like the Ultimate Warrior theme song. Um, yeah. But you know, the, back to last week. So I, so I had mentioned. I don't know when I cut out. I'll just say it real quick. But the guys that came up from NXT and were underutilized. So whether you want to mention Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, like even Kevin Owens to an extent has kind of gone downhill since then. I just wish they used the NXT guys that they brought up uh, in a better uh, light. The only one that I would say I don't care about, and they can continue to not do anything with is the king of bros because uh, he makes me sick. But everybody else, uh, you know, Bobby Roode, Shinsuke, Sami Zayn, those would be three guys that I would love to see in a bigger spotlight. I think all three of them are super talented. I think their gimmicks are really, you know, entertaining to me. I, I just, I think the world of those three in particular, I would love to see them, you know, be more. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff here. So, guys, appreciate everyone tuning in today. This was a fun episode to go through TLC and talk about a few other things. Uh, obviously, as always, make sure – it looks like Nick wants to say something. We wanted to do one more thing. Obviously, we're shooting this. If you watch Sharp Bets and Fantasy Sets, you know I'm wearing the exact same stuff because we had to film this on Tuesday. Uh, instead of filming it on Thursday when we normally do, and the reason why we're not filming it on Thursday, well uh, – you know, I, I we talked a lot about themes last week, but I think Fred and I wanted to break out in a little song. So a one and <clears throat> and a three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Do you not know the words, Fred? <laughs> You're singing so slow. You... I'll try to I'll try to keep up the pace. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Miguel. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miguel. I know you're turning 19 years old. We get you a cameo, but that's not cool anymore. So happy birthday, buddy. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Getting old here, huh? Getting old. So uh, appreciate that. Look at that. Wow. What a two great co-hosts I have here. Uh, appreciate you guys. As always, of course, you can find us on uh, the True Exact platform. You can find us on Instagram at True Exact Radio, as well as the YouTube channel iTunes, Spotify, and the uh, podcast app, of course, on iPhone. Uh, give us a, a follow. Make sure you subscribe. Tune into the show. Give us some feedback. If you guys like the show or if there's anything you want to see, you can certainly uh, reach out to us. Best way probably would be through social media on Instagram, True Exact Radio. Uh, we'll be back next week as we talk about year end. We have a special, exciting episode we're going to do in awards, and we're going to come up with different categories uh, to talk about the 2020, the craziest year, obviously, in all of our lives. Uh, but we're going to obviously have it tailor-made to professional wrestling. So, guys, thanks again. We appreciate you both. I appreciate you both tuning in today, helping me out with TLC. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Pleasure was all mine, guys. Thanks.